I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Go, go! It's hard to believe just one year ago, Disney and J.J. Abrams gave Star Wars a triumphant return to the big screen with The Force Awakens. Now Disney's playing a new Star Wars movie every year, and next week they're finally telling the story of how the Rebel Alliance stole the plans of the Death Star with Rogue One, a Star Wars story. And with audiences eager to see the return of none other than Darth Vader on the cinema screen, it's easy to forget about the man who made it all possible, George Lucas, who's been forced to watch Disney bring his saga back to life, as well as the Indiana Jones franchise, after he had pretty much killed them off. But before we got the Crystal Skull or the prequels, where did it all go wrong for one of the defining filmmakers of the 20th century? Well, most people point their fingers at the summer of 1986 when he made one of the most infamous bombs in cinema history, Howard the Duck. Yes, George's first excursion outside of Star Wars and Indiana Jones was producing this adaptation of the Marvel comic book character making this flick the first true cinematic adaptation of a Marvel superhero. And with Lucas working with his American Graffiti co-writers Willard Hike and Gloria Katz, this movie couldn't possibly have gone wrong. But then it got spat upon by critics, lost millions at the box office, and even tied with Prince's Under the Cherry Moon for the Worst Picture Award at that year's Razzies. Plus, George Lucas even had to sell off some of his assets to make back the millions of dollars he lost on this movie. But seeing as I love this movie as a little kid, I'm more than willing to give it another shot. I mean, what has a George Lucas movie about a mischievous, wisecracking alien ever turned out bad? Huh? Yep, I cannot think of one single time <laughs> where that hasn't been a winning formula. Oh I'm in hell, aren't I? So instead of starting us out in a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, Howard the Duck's opening has a voice telling us of an alternate universe in the cosmos called Duck World, a parallel version of Earth inhabited by anthropomorphic ducks, one of them being Howard, an ordinary schmuck chilling in his apartment one night when his chair suddenly shoots him out of the building, across the darkness of space, and into the planet Earth, specifically into the city of Cleveland, Ohio, where he comes across a rock singer named Beverly Switzler, played by Leah Thompson, getting assaulted by two thugs in an alley and decides to intervene. Let the female creature go. Do you like see what I see? A talking duck? I've been doing too much toot. Um, I think the only ones doing too much toot are the screenwriters of this fucking movie. And Beverly decides to help out this adorable Muppet abortion by letting him sleep in her apartment and helping him get back to his planet with some help from her scientist friend, Phil, played by Tim Robbins, here to suck away the hilarity this movie wasn't providing in the first place. Me? Phil, you, Howard. That's the joke. But when they find out Phil is just a janitor at the science lab, Beverly and Howard split apart, and Howard decides to accept his fate and find himself a job in Cleveland. Oh, sure, because you remember that scene in E.T. where E.T. just gave up phoning home and got himself a job at McDonald's? Boy, I sure do. But Howard finds he doesn't fit in ordinary society, and reunites with Beverly to become her new manager. With Leia Thompson starting to grow <clears throat> fond of Howard, in a love affair that's perhaps even creepier than the time she almost fucked her son. I just can't resist your intense animal magnetism. Um, has anyone told Leia Thompson what a duck's penis looks like? <laughs> Thankfully, they're interrupted when Phil comes in with his colleague, Dr. Jenning, played by Jeffrey Jones, who says he accidentally beamed down Howard while testing his new spectroscope and might be able to reverse it to send Howard back home. But they arrive at the lab only to find something's gone horribly wrong. Ah, my eyes, my eyes, it was terrible. Ah, yes, I believe this is how audiences left the test screenings for this movie. And as we find out, they've accidentally beamed down another unknown creature from space, which possesses Dr. Jenning and takes over over his body, I start to suspect the writers of this movie might have seen Ghostbusters. I'm not jetting anymore. The transformation is complete. I am now someone else. There is no jetting only someone else. 
I mean, you can tell that George Lucas and his crew are going for the same blend of snarky humor and amazing visual effects that Ghostbusters had, but fails so completely that it doesn't feel remotely like a product of the same man who gave us Star Wars. The plot shifts all over the place, the comedy is awful, the action is worse, Howard is an unlikable and bland protagonist, and how the fuck a movie where Jeffrey Jones fucks a cigarette lighter with his alien tongue dick still managed to be rated PG, I will never know. No wonder this dude turned out to be a child molester. Yeah, shut up. But as much of an utter mess as this movie is, it's still more engaging than a lot of bad movies you see nowadays. Namely because of the 1980s kitsch value this movie has with its soundtrack and costumes. Also, the special effects are really solid for their time, for what that's worth, but good effects are given in any George Lucas production. And other than the entertainment value it has as an insane disaster, it drags in more than a few places, and is way too damn long at nearly two hours. So I'll leave it to you out there as to whether you want to give this piece of shit another look-see. As for me though, I can't help but feel sad for poor George Lucas. I mean, since Howard the Duck made that cameo at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy, that means Disney made better movies out of not just one, but two properties that were ruined by George Lucas. Hello darkness smile friend this movie needs less industrial light and magic and more inebriating liquor and martinis so shift into light speed and travel to the awfully good drinking game take a shot or drink every time you see or hear another terrible duck pun no one laughs at a master of quack foo book of ducko your history you little one quack <laughs> And since I'm not laughing at these jokes, I am instead worrying about the poor dwarf actor underneath that duck suit. Please look at my medical bracelet. Oh. You hear another song or musical number, which were written for this movie by Thomas Dolby, who coincidentally, Tim Robbins' character looks an awful lot like. Conspiracy. Jeffrey Jones fires blue lasers out of his eyes, which makes him not a terribly scary villain for this movie, but makes him perfect for a Bonnie Tyler music video. And take a double shot when you see two moons in the sky in the opening of the movie. <laughs> you get it? I understood that reference. As well as when you hear George Lucas's trademark Wilhelm scream. And how appropriate, because I believe that's the exact same sound audiences have been making while watching some of George Lucas's recent output. <laughs> and on the nudie watch, despite the fact that this is a PG movie, we got a straight up shot of duck titties in this godforsaken movie. I mean, between the condom jokes, the alien tongue rape, and now duck tits, how the hell did this movie ever manage to be Ray of PG? Okay, fellas, let's see, uh, Howard the Duck. Well, it's about a duck, Lucas is producing it, so it's probably for kids. No need to watch that shit, Ray of PG! Thanks, MPAA, you fucked up more childhoods than Jeffrey Jones. On the enjoyableness continuum scale from Boulder Bruce, Howard the Duck, well, to borrow a quote from I Love the 80s, Howard the Duck makes Gilead like Gone with the Wind. And flaps its wings to a 6 out of 10. Out of all the great ducks in entertainment history, this one is a goose. Okay. I'm Jesse Schaefer, JoeBlow.com, and stay tuned next time for our big, awfully good Christmas special, when I'll be taking a look at my recently unearthed copy of the Howard the Duck Holiday Special.